Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. you. That is fun. Hokey material, but what? Fun. In the mm. style of Moliere. You yes. know, just kind of. My first guest is a good friend. I have been a fan of Bob's ever since I heard his first record out of Chicago. He is starting uh, the fifth season of his show at a new time, which is 9 p.m. Mondays, and starting September the 29th. He has been nominated again this year as best actor in, in a comedy role. What else? <laughs> Would you welcome Bob Newhart? I, I'm indebted to you for bringing me out after a sketch that worked. It's, I, think it's a, I don't know how many I've done. I think it's the first time. Yeah, we've had sketches before. We've had some, yeah. Things have not yet And you tend well. to uh, bring them back to the desk. You know, you, you don't leave them there. You know? Do you ever do, if you have a bad show or a bad night, do you take it home and say, oh boy, what, what happened? Do you get nasty, mean, no, sullen? No, Just not really. I, I kind of know during the week if it's going to be bad. It, really? It, yeah, you, you can kind of, I mean, we do 24 shows, and you know they're not all going to be, uh, you love them to be, but they're not all going to be great. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to be four or five a year, and it's just part of part of doing it. And part you're back next week, next week, and next week it's a good show, and you forget yeah. about it. I mean, that's... Congratulations on the Emmy nominee. Thank you. This man, is what, your fourth or fifth? Your fourth or fifth? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. This is, the, uh, this is the fourth nomination, and it, it really is true. I mean, I'm, I'm highly honored to be included, that's all. I mean, whether I win or lose. I remember, I think it was just about a year before I started this show. You were 60, 61, you were working CBS. Your show it was, was a 61? NBC, it was NBC. NBC. Uh, you were nominated for an Emmy, and the show was off before the Emmy cast came about or something well, like no, that. Well, no, no, what happened was um, it was a, a, a show that... That year, everybody who got an Emmy, I didn't get an Emmy, but the show got an Emmy as the best comedy show. Right. Every show that got an Emmy had been canceled. Uh, I remember that. It was Dick very strange. Van, Dick Van Dyke had been canceled, and I had been canceled, and we got an Emmy. And uh, every, every show had been canceled. And uh, as the names were announced, people in the audience were going, No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, I don't want it. Please. <laughs> Knowing that they were going to be next. But the, sh the first show was a variety <clears throat> show I did in... Uh, 61, 62, and that was critically acclaimed. I know it. Uh, commercially, it was not uh, not that well received. Right. It, um, our lowest rating, we got a minus seven, minus <laughs> in the Nielsen. And uh, the way you get a minus seven is <laughs> not only is no one watching the show, yes. but several people without TV sets had heard about it <laughs> and said they wouldn't watch it even if they had it. On. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a negative, yeah. bad, bad day. And then you wind up owing viewers to other networks, and it's just a <laughs> negative flow. Yeah. <laughs> I got to pay you a compliment. I was coming back from New York last week, and they were playing your album, oh. one of your one of your early albums, I think, the Button Down Mine or something. And I found myself literally, you know, when you were listening to something and somebody else is not, and you're laughing out loud, <laughs> but you're not aware that you're laughing out loud because you got these earphones on. And people are, you know, some of them are trying to sleep. And I'm going, ha, ha, ha. I see these people. <laughs> Nothing's going on in the play. God, that was wonderful stuff. You were doing the Sir Walter Raleigh. You were doing Abner Doubleday. You were doing all the, 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 the bus drivers. That stuff holds up well, forever. That's, that's what's nice. I, I do that now in the, we have, we have a, we do yeah. the show in front of a live audience on Friday. And, the, and, um, and do you do some of the routines? I do warm-up. Warm up, and I, I decided to do some of the old routines, and they still hold up. And that, but you know, you also have nice. a new generation of people. Yeah. Also, kids who didn't hear that at the time, if, to them it's brand new, so nothing yeah. really changes. Mm -hmm. Now, we, ha we see each other a bit socially, yeah. and uh, I'm still smoking and not proud of it. I have made a, a number of abortive attempts to quit, and I'm, I'm going to get it. I know you've been off for, what, a year now? I've been off a year. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, well, I'll say one thing. I'll say one thing when you're around. You're not one of those holier-than-thou people who, you know, charge into everybody else and condemn them for... No, smoking. I don't preach. I, I'd, yeah. be a, I'd be a hypocrite if I preached. But I was, uh, first of all, the doctor said you can't have any more, you know. And uh, <laughs> uh, he said, you could, you've had your last cigarette. And, uh, and I said, well, how about if I taper off? Like, uh, say, I'll do like two packs for like five years and then <laughs> pack and a half for five years and then. <laughs> he said no. He said no, and uh, I, it was something. Uh, anyone who's thinking about giving it up, uh, I didn't think I could ever do it, and, and I, you did. I put on twelve pounds, but I but I did it. But that's not bad. Now the hardest thing in giving it up, I gave it up in September the last year. 
in December, I played golf with your producer, Mr. Uh, Decorda, ah. who uh, smokes a pack on the first tee. <laughs> As he's taking his and practice he just, swing. Yeah, yeah. He, takes a pra he takes a practice swing and goes like that, you know, and, uh, and I'm diving in the bushes. <laughs> there's th wait, there's still a couple of good putts. <laughs> but it's like, it's a minefield, you know, and uh, I mean, if you, if you make it through the minefield, and most people don't, but if you make it through, I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of the people who the, the doctor said you can't have that's it. That's it. Yeah. Great, I think it's great. We'll take a short break. We're coming right back. Did you used to work in a burlesque house, Tommy? That's a night. <laughs> That's a song that dancers use yeah. a lot of time. Night train. Da -da 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 -da. Bum -bum -bum -bum. Misspent youth. Miss. <laughs> Did you ever play in a place that had uh, strippers? My first job was uh, working for an underwater strip teaser. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. An underwater striptease? Where was this? She, she, in Baltimore. She yeah. worked in a, in a plexiglass tank. Her name was Divina. Dive Vina. <laughs> Dive Vina? <laughs> Dive Vina? Dive Vina. She'd go into this water and strip underneath the water. Yes, and she lived through every performance. <laughs> were you, you weren't in the bubble with her, were you? I mean, you were outside playing? No, we had uh, three instruments, uh, sax, right. drums, and piano. Yeah. <laughs> Dive Dina. The things you find out after all this time. Did you ever work uh, your, your comedy no, act I where they featured? I used to in the Midwest when I was doing comedy magic and ventriloquism. I always got, get booked out of Kansas City or Omaha, and there would always be, I get a lot of those Elk Club and mm -hmm. Rotary stag parties, and they didn't want to see you. I'd say, now uh, somebody will take a card. Get off the stage! <laughs> And I was working with, I remember the lady's name. One of them was quite, uh, quite well known. Jenny Boom Boom. Um, well, whatever, that's enough. That's, those were tough. You shows. don't have to know much more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Those were tough because they didn't come to see you, and you're up there trying to do your funny little jokes, and the guys want to see the girls. You never did that at all? No, I was. Because uh... you started in Chicago. Well, in like. Yay! And Chicago had a lot of... Yeah, no, I started in, uh, like, 19... I did, I played a club, uh, it wasn't a strip club, it was like, they had this... Uh, it was like a throwback to the 30s. They had this uh, line of girls, and uh, I, I went out and I died every night. I mean, I just, just nothing. It just, I did, I had 20 minutes, and I, every night it died, and... Uh, first guy came out and sang uh, the, all the verses of Sorrento, you know. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, I know the club. And, uh... I went out and died, and I, I said, so one night I cut it short because it was going really bad. You know, I said, you've been a lovely audience, and I walked off. And uh, they all said, oh, my God, he's off. And they came running out. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and the guy said, uh, the guy said, you, this is in Windsor, Canada, Windsor, Ontario, Canada. He said, uh, he was a German guy. He said, you've got to do 20 minutes. <laughs> Gives the girls time to change. <laughs> I said, but I'm dying out there, you know. I mean, there's no point in staying out. I did my strongest stuff, and yep. they didn't care for that, so I'm, I'm sure it's not going to get better. He says, you have to do 20 minutes. <laughs> so he went back out and did 20 minutes. You mentioned during the break that Teresa has been on one of your Teresa shows. Teresa was on our show. She's Teresa wonderful. She's, she's, Teresa Genzel, who's going to come out a little while later in the show, is a marvelous yeah. comedian. She really... She, she fell in love with uh, Larry, Larry, oh, Daryl, and Daryl. Funny. Show. Those guys are funny guys. It was an unrequited love. <laughs> Now, I've known you for 20, 25 years, yeah. something like yeah. that. You have, and I, and I don't say this as a, any kind of a put-down, you have that kind of every guy's, every man's face. I mean, you've been on television for years. I'll still bet when you go out, a lot of times, people know you, but sometimes don't say, they is, don't, is that true? Yeah, they don't, they, they don't know, they're not quite sure if they see me on television uh, or uh, they, a lot of people think they were in the Army with me, you know? <laughs> Or a lot of women think I was their first husband. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you? No, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, why do I know you from? Did it bother you? Well, now, sometimes people would say, well, see, they'll, they'll say, uh, boy, you sure look like him. Oh. You know? <laughs> well, that, now you have to say, I, I am him. You know, yep. I find so. I say, yeah, yeah, I know. I've been told that a lot. And that's, um, you sound presumptuous. I said, the guy's ruined my life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
we, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm him. Well, we're going to take a break. We have uh, Sandra Santiago, and then Teresa will join us we'll, for a little bit of talk. So here we are. <laughs> Very attractive and talented young actress who's one of the co-stars of NBC's hit series Miami Vice, which premieres uh, Friday, September 26th at 9 o'clock. Would you welcome Sandra Santiago? <laughs> nice to see you. How are you? Oh, I'm... I saw you in ma I saw you in makeup, and you do this. You did this before you went on the show. You sit back there like you're going to the electric chair. Yeah. It's not that bad. You. No, it's. I love it here. Yeah. I do. It, it's. I don't know. My my heart just starts going like this. Beware my heart. Yes. Yeah. Something like that. Anyway, you look lovely. Thank you. There's an article in TV. This week's TV guide, isn't there? Yes. About you. Somebody told me you used to sell TV guides. Oh. Well, now what a switch. Somebody who sold them. Now oh, you're. Oh my God. Yes. You did not door to door. No, 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 on the phone. It was on the phone. It was the worst job I've ever had. You mean you just dial numbers at random? Oh, no. I've, I've got some of those calls so, before. You know, it, it, there would be a, a group of us, and we'd be in these booths, and uh, we had these phones, and there was a spiel you had to do. One, two, three, four, five. Give me the spiel. Do you remember? I don't remember. Are you yeah. kidding? I... <laughs> I was so horrible at it. You just sat and I, read it, and whoever answered, you started. No, we there were so, uh, people we had to call the East Coast, West Coast. I used to get the calls. I used to have to wake people up at eight in the morning to try and mm -hmm. sell them a TV guide. <laughs> so I get these, you know, I call and I, I'd have to follow the spiel, and I go, "Good morning, ma'am. What you know? I, blah 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 blah. I don't remember any yeah. of it." And they go, "No, nah, we don't want it." And we would be monitored, see? There would be someone monitoring to, monitoring to oh. us all the whole time. Yeah. And, so you had uh, to be polite. Well, we had to follow the rules. We uh. had to follow every single thing. And oh, I, I had a nervous breakdown during this job. How were you paid? Depending on the number of subscriptions yes, you get? Yes, yes. Did you get a lot of subscriptions? Uh, no, Nothing. I never sold one. <laughs> I never... That's obviously, I, obviously not your telephone solicitation is not your I, line of work. I, obviously, did just, I could not do it. In fact, one day I just dropped the thing and I said, "I can't do it. I'm sorry, I can't do it. They're driving me nuts. They don't want it. They don't want it from me. I can't sell it." You know I'm what it is? Sorry. It's personal rejection. Yeah, you feel it's like you're horrible. personally rejected. And then they would be, you know, they would be monitoring us. So, so they would come and yell at me, and then I'd be yelled at by the people. Yeah. You know, no, I don't want it. Yeah. Why, well, no, no, no. What do you want? So that was the end of that career. So forget it. I that the day that I had a nervous breakdown, I left. Yeah, and I never went back. That's the time to change careers. Yeah. Just as the, just yeah. as the mind snaps, you move on to something else. Yeah. This is your uh, third season of Miami Vice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, su very successful, hot show. You enjoying it? Oh, yes. Enjoying the, the celebrity hood? A lot of perks that come with that? Or little additional things that you get because you've been on for three years? No. Really? No. Everybody else brags about how all the free things they get. I don't get anything. <laughs> I, you know, you know, like, um... Olivia and uh, Michael, they buy a coach ticket and they get to the airport and they're upgraded immediately. You mean they bump them up to first class? Yeah, because they're recognized. Oh, Miami Vice, oh, oh. I go up, they don't care who I am. They don't know who I am. They don't bump me at all. So I, I decided I would uh, buy first class tickets. And uh, so I'm riding on first class now and I have this dog. Yeah. So we travel together. And uh, the dog this... can't go in the cabin with you, can he? Yes, yes, I, I paid full allowed... price for him. You buy your dog a first class? <laughs> well, not, it's not Couldn't as much as you buy the dog I... tourist and you could go in first class? <laughs> dog wouldn't know the difference. It's not as much as, you know, regular first oh, I class. See. But I take him this little bag. I have this Louis, this uh, little Louis Vuitton bag that for I take. For your dog? Him. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, I took him on, once I took him on this flight. And we're sitting there, and he's very nervous, and he's yapping and yapping. But I've given him tranquilizers, so I know that he's going to calm down. <laughs> you know? Little zip in his milk bone yeah. thing, kind of. Well, he doesn't like flying. He doesn't well, like it at all. And uh, so Captain Cunningham 
who is the captain of the, the plane, he comes out and he says, I'm sorry, ma'am. He doesn't know who I am. He said, I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, I refuse to take this, uh, I refuse to start the plane unless this dog is out of the plane. Unless, and I go, I I'm sorry, excuse me? And he says, I, I cannot travel. I cannot take responsibility of the entire first class cabin to be f traveling with this yapping dog. And I go, well, he'll be fine. You, you as soon as the drugs kick right, in. Yeah. Right, right, he'll be fine. <laughs> no. Well, he didn't want to wait. Yeah. Well, he's he a captain of the ship. Yeah. You know. Well, he basically threw me off with the dog. So you didn't make that Well, he said he wouldn't take off unless the dog was out. So you and the dog? So I said, well, we're going fine. And I took him and I says, what's your name? And I, I wrote a little letter. But Nothing. Didn't they don't problem. care. <laughs> Did you ever get back on a flight that would take your dog? Yes. Yeah. Why do you travel with your dog all the time? Because he's my baby. He's, you know... He's a dog. He's my companion. <laughs> He's a dog. I mean, can't it, I mean, won't the dog be all right for two days? You wouldn't put him in a kennel? Well, no one will take care of him. What's the dog's name? Well, he's got several names. <laughs> that must confuse him uh, pretty much. He is. Wait, hey, Spot, come here, Rover. Hey, you. What? How do you call a dog that has he's several totally names? totally confused. He's well, insane. Of course he is. Well, you wonder why he's nervous? <laughs> And the dog's got no name? But I... What do you call him when you call the dog? Well, Suppose I... he's here and he's over there. What would you say? Well, his real name is Prince. Oh, well, but... how about Prince? That's a good name. But when he's with my mother and, and my mother calls him Boo Boo, uh, <laughs> Don Johnson calls him Scruffy, Fluffy. The crew calls him Scruffy Buffy or something like that. That dog's going to end up in the Betty Ford Clinic. Uh, you know... I mean, you can't... I mean, you can't... You can't do that to a dog. <laughs> Dogs, you see, only hear the sound. You have to, it's the repetition. You as, can't say, here, Scruffy, well, here, Prince, here, Boo Boo. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I, he's in school right now. Oh, trust me. <laughs> what, what, are they, what are they trying to teach him? No, I have... His name. <laughs> His name. <laughs> 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 You took him to a dog obedience school? I had to, to, yes. to stop the barking, or as Bob said, to teach him his name? Everything. Get him, give him one name and stay with it. But no one else calls him that name. Then you've got to draw the line. I try. Uh, what would you call him? You call him Prince. I call him then Prince. Then it should be but Prince. But I also call him other names. Bob, uh, will you say... <laughs> oh, you can't do that. Well, when I, the... he gets me upset, I call him names I can't repeat well, here. Okay. But... <laughs> How long is he, will he be in school? Is there a... He'll be there for a month. For a month. But he's doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? Do they, do they call you or you what? Do they yes, send... the trainer called me the other day, and she says he's up for commercials. <laughs> he's up for commercials? Yeah, I swear. He's up Holly... for commercials. That's show business dog. Does he have an agent? No, not yet. Oh, I'm his agent. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, get him a name first, you know. <laughs> Prince the Wonder Dog or something. Okay. Oh, well, next time you're on, would you bring the dog with you? Oh, which? Really? Sure. He'll be trained by then. You better be. <laughs> you better be. Okay, we'll be back. Here you go. Okay, I meant that about the dog. Okay. My next guest is our lovely tea time lady, and Teresa is currently co-starring in the upcoming miniseries called Fresno. Would you welcome back Teresa Ganzel? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes, How I good did. you were? Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Yeah, do you... it was fun. That was a fun week to work yeah. on that show. Yeah. Do you take flattery well when people come up and compliment you? And... Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, some people, you give them a compliment, and they'll say, oh, not really, and kind of throw it back, you know, and it makes you feel awkward when you give the compliment. Oh, no, it makes me feel good. I appreciate it. You were here just a couple of weeks ago. We tried this sketch about two yes. weeks ago. We got about a minute into the sketch. The mustache fell off. I couldn't get it back on. We scrubbed the sketch, so this is a, a, a make-do tonight. Yes, yeah, so it was instant replay. Yeah. And you were having problems last time you were here. You were being evicted. Yes. From your house or apartment? My, from my house that I rent, and the landlord was uh, trying to sell it from out from under me. Did he do that? No, he didn't. This was so great. He called me up. He said that he saw me on The Tonight Show, <laughs> and he decided to take the house off the market. You're kidding. So it was, I can't believe it. It was wonderful. 
And, yeah, so thank you. Well, yes. You're welcome. Yes. Yay. We try to we try to help the homeless as much as we can here. <laughs> well, and and he's also um, I, I've lived where I have for 13 months, and it doesn't have a backyard, but it has this little deck with a jacuzzi on it. And for 13 uh, months, he, it was broken, and he wouldn't fix it. So the day before yesterday, he fixes the jacuzzi. Hey. So I'm thinking, I don't know what's going on, but maybe he thinks that uh, if he doesn't start repairing things around my house, that I'd say something bad about him on the show or mm -hmm. something. Because suddenly he's like, and I wouldn't do that. Uh -huh. What it, needs to be done at the house now? Yeah, that's what, exactly. <laughs> Anything else you'd like done? Yes, you got the jacuzzi uh, working? Have Mike, you... His name's Michael, my does landlord. Does the jacuzzi work? <laughs> yes, it does. Right, it's fabulous. Good. He fixed that day before yesterday. And now I would just like to say that the back burner on the... <laughs> on the left side of the stove is not working, nor is the garbage disposal. And I would like that fixed maybe by Monday. <laughs> Or no doubt you'll go to the Los Angeles Housing Authority, right? Yes. That's kind of, you're, not, you're not threatening him, though. No, not like, at all. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. Well, how'd you do without your jacuzzi for 13 months? You just never went in it. I just never went in it, and, and uh, um, uh, birds uh, were falling into oh, it. Yeah. It was awful. Has it got all those jets and all those? Uh, the, yes. It's, yeah. I broke it in last night. Oh, it was good. wonderful. Good. It was terrific, and uh, had a great time with the jacuzzi last night. It was great. Did you? Yes. All along? Well, I uh, know my girlfriends Chrissy no. and Terry came along. Yeah. But no, we had a good time. We did, we did. Uh, you know, girls in the jacuzzi talking, laughing, listening to music. That's kind it of was, nice. It was nice. It was uh, uh, a blonde, a brunette, and a redhead. It looked like a late night version of Petticoat Junction. Really? <laughs> So you're going to stay it there It was now. fun. Yes, I'm going to stay there. I'm very now, how happy. is Fresno going? Fresno you... is going great. Uh, it's really funny. When, when does that start? Um, it's coming on uh, the week of November 16th. Mm -hmm. And you play? Uh, Bobby Joe Bob. Oh, Bobby Joe Bob, right. <laughs> <laughs> Country Western girl, yeah. Uh, uh, country Western singer. <laughs> yes. Where's home for you, Rachel? We, I talk, I've asked uh, you Toledo, before. Ohio. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. I also remember you were trying to unload your car last time you were here. Yes. Yes, uh, uh, that's difficult because um, when you I tried to sell it privately. Yes, I put an ad in the newspaper and. Not, aren't you scared that really strange people will show up? At... Well, strange people did, but I met them. <laughs> I met them at the Seven Eleven. So. Oh, that's a well-known place. To... <laughs> no, that's no. certainly a credited place to meet people. That's almost like the Hall of Justice there. <laughs> So you meet them at the 7-Eleven to check them out first before you bring them to the house? Uh, yes. No, I didn't ever brought them to the house. Uh, any sales transaction... Oh, you took your car there. ...took the car to the 7-Eleven. And, uh, but people, they get so technical. When I saw the car, I loved the car. And I said, I, I want this... And I didn't get so involved with uh, taking it to a mechanic and test driving it. And these people were telling me all these things that were wrong with my car. Right. That I didn't even know about. Two guys came with a Bondo magnet. What's that? I didn't know what it was either. It's a magnet that they go like this all over the car, <laughs> looking to see if it's been in accidents, if it's oh. been filled with plaster or Bondo or yeah. whatever. And, uh, I but found you... out my car was, uh, basically a big red pinata. Yeah, but you... <laughs> We'll be right back. Well, you're popping the wall. <laughs> nice to have you here. Thank you. Good luck, Bob. Bob's show uh, goes on 9 p.m. This 29th of uh, September. That's right. Thanks Thank for being here. Thank you. As usual. Good to see you. And uh, uh, Miami Vice. Miami Vice, of course, premieres Friday, September 26th at 9. And the next, I mentioned about bringing your dog here, Sandra. Oh, it's, it's not too big a dog, is it? He is the biggest Shih Tzu I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. No, he's not that big. But he's just... But he'll be trained. No, he'll okay, be trained. okay. <laughs> okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. I'm humbled by that applause.